Welcome to Deep Thought. Think about why you do the things you do. Think about why. You know what? I'm going to tell you what. Anybody who, who has been over at my place and really just me in general, I can be anal about cleaning. I can be anal. You can might be fine, uh, you know, a little dust here, a little spot there. But for the most part, you know, I'm very anal about cleaning my place. Very anal about it, you know. And I was wondering, you know, I thought about why. I thought about one situation back with my grandmother when I was living with her. And I remember she wanted to uh, be a babysitter. And she actually did that for a little while. She, she had that hustle. She had that hustle. And I remember she kept me out of school one day just to clean up around the house. Just to clean up. I mean, and we, we I mean, she, every, every spot. We spent the whole day cleaning and everything, even though I didn't think it was, I personally, I didn't think it was that bad, personally. But she, she, she did. She did, she wanted to be a babysitter. So you had this couple come over, they, they didn't even look at the entire house, you know, cause we had a basement upstairs, bathrooms. Most they did, they didn't even use the restroom. Most they did was stay in the living room, you know, with the child and everything. And I was just like, ain't this some stuff? <laughs> ain't this some stuff? But I ain't think about it until I said, why am I so ain't no cleaner? Oh, grandma, <laughs> you know? Cause I was thinking about um, my youngest son. My youngest son is really ain't no cleaning himself. Really ain't no, um, you know, really he straightened out everything. I was like, man. Okay, where you get, oh, getting the guy from probably watching me. But, you know, and I was thinking about that, and that was just a little thing. But here's, here's the thing with it. Why do you do the things you do? Why, where did your habits come from? Good and bad, good and bad. You know, why are you really doing it? You know, why are you really doing everything? You know, in your relationships, let me use that for an example. Why do you interact with the opposite sex or whoever you going to interact with the way that you do? You know, what was it? Like, uh, you know, I haven't talked about counterfeit personas much on this level. I've talked about it on my, uh, on my ROM TV. I'll put a link to that series in the description box. You know, just the ROM TV thing that I was doing on counterfeit personas, like one of them one of them has a control dynamic. And usually because deep down there, you have a portion of people who don't feel like they can get the love that they want unless they have some control over their mate. It's very, it's very, it's basic, but it's deep and it happens. You know, like if you have a control, if you happen to have one, why do you have it? That's because they feel like they didn't get the love they wanted from an opposite sex parent at a certain age. So they feel like in order to get love, they have to have some control. You know, it's deep. Check out the ROM TV series on that. You know, like, and it could be anything, anything. You know, it could be you have, you, well, we all have a counterfeit persona. We all have a counter persona, but, but then other things. Why did we do this? You know, I was thinking about, okay, I can get along very well with bougie people. You know, people, upper class people. I was like, well, why is that? Well, where I went to schools at, you know? Starting in high school, then college, and then at the graduate level. I was around those types. So it's like I can be comfortable, more comfortable around them than other people. I was like, oh, that's kind of deep because I'm used to being around that type of person. You know, think about like whether you do it good or bad, like sit down, sit down and think, okay, why do you like this particular thing? Why do you like these particular mates? You know, why do you want to live where you want to live? You know, what, what is it about you? You know, because there's always a reason. You just don't do something. That's one thing. One thing I've seen in life, people just don't do something. There's a reason. Some people, you know, a few people, and I'm gonna say a few, I was gonna say some, I'll say a few, even less. Really think about it. 
Other people just do stuff, but they don't think why they do stuff. You know, that's why a lot of people might go to some type of therapist or something to turn that out. I remember a woman, a, a lady friend, she was like, why she did the things she did, it was like it went back to some issues during her childhood. That's how deep it is. That's how deep it is. You know, it could be something that happened when you were older. You know, it's like we have a response and sometimes we, you know, we bury it. You know, unfortunately, it could be some trauma that happened, some type of abuse or something when we were a child, but we bury it and we don't know why, you know? You know, I'm known for talking about the sexual imprint. You know, we go for mates, and when we look at the mates we go for, it's a certain type. Like, I look at the type of women I, I'll go for, and then I start thinking about it. It's like, oh, wait a minute. There was that type who first showed some interest in me. So whenever I see that particular type, when I see that type, I respond a certain way. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's gorgeous. And I was like, why do I think she's gorgeous? Oh, she's like a, she's more plainer. But then I think about the woman who showed some real interest in me, you know, real interest. And it's deep, it's deep on that level. It's like, oh, why do you like this person? Oh, they, this person's gorgeous, why? Boom. You know, why do I think this particular woman is attractive? This other one ain't. Why do I respond to this particular woman, but not another one? Boom, it's always the same. When I look at the women that I've really got along with in life, they all, if you put them all together, they all look related. I was like, the ones I got along with best, the ones I didn't, they went further from that. So it's like, oh, okay, this is some deep stuff. This is some deep stuff, you know? And that's with everybody, every single person. Every, why do you do the things you do? Sit down and think about it. Now, if it's a good thing, it's not, it's not it's, you know, that's cool. But what if it's a bad thing? Because all of us, all of us are still climbing out that m mountain. None of us are perfect. All of us got something that we have to work on. All of us, myself included. That's what I'm saying, all of us. We all got something we got to work on, you know? What are, we, what are we doing? Where are we going? What are we... Uh, was our demons. We got to slay them, but then we have our angels. It's like, okay, that's a good thing, you know, because of that. Now, like I had mentioned, you know, you know, being raised partly by grandma, grandma was very big on cleaning. That's why I can be like, I can be anal about it sometimes. Sometimes, not as bad, not totally. You know, I still, you know, I'm always looking at something and say, yeah, I got to deal with that. You know, I ain't quite Oscar like Felix Unger. <laughs> you know, anybody used to watch that old TV show, The Odd Couple, and you know, Felix, he, he was anal about it. He was anal. You know, indeed, that's one of the counterfeit personas is being anal. But, you know, it's something to think about. Why? I want y'all to think about it. Why do you do the things you do? Why do you, why do you get into it? Why do you like something? Really think about it, all right? And everybody is different. It's something I can't tell you. Somebody else can't tell you. But you can tell yourself. All right? So anyway, that's all I have for today. Y'all have a good weekend. All right? And I'll get back with y'all on Sunday morning. Peace and blessings.